first if you can start by telling us what the plan is from this point until the end of the fiscal because it looks like you may you know in all likelihood not be able to meet both the award and the execution target for the full year uh, hi morning uh, see uh, the situation is that last year we awarded about 4500 kilometers works as against that, we have already completed about 2,800 kilometers works have been awarded. Mm. And we, we plan to touch, I, I'm pretty hopeful that we would have awarded works for about 5,000 kilometers by mm. the close of this year. Okay. Uh, See, so, but one has to look at... Sorry, go ahead, sir. One has to look at the complete life cycle of a road infra project. I think your figures are uh, a bit... Uh, outdated. If I take the figures exactly up to 31st December, it is 2678 kilometers works mm -hmm. which have been awarded already. Mm -hmm. But if you, when you look at the complete life cycle of a project, it has a number of major activities. And land acquisition is one of the factors which is a challenge, but I'm sure that we would, we would be able to achieve more than what we did last year, at least 10 to 15 percent more notwithstanding the challenges that we faced in this. Okay. And we have also to appreciate that, you know, when we go through this life cycle, there has to be some kind of a catch up on certain things. It has been seen that more time and effort we spend in planning stage, that is acquisition of land, ensuring that all the statutory clearances are available, all the work fronts are available. It takes lesser time in execution of the project. Mm. So we are now trying that we should not be awarding any project unless we have 80% of the land is in our possession and the statutory clearances are available. I'm sure we would be able to upscale this next year. Okay. Uh, morning, Mr. Malik. Uh, if you can tell us how much did you award last year? You said it will be 10 to 15% more. So what's that number? Well, last year was about 4,500 kilometers. Okay, so you may end up probably with about 5,500? Uh, between 5,000 to 5,200, that's what I look okay. at. Okay, so then, you know, this is off the target of 15,000, which is what my colleague was trying to point out. What, uh, wa See, what uh, went into the mind when you all made that target and what has come short? Is it land acquisition? Is it availability of funds? No, availability of funds is not a problem at all, but okay. land acquisition has been one of the big challenges, mm -hmm. and we are pursuing it. We have set uh, systems in place now mm -hmm. where we are expediting. We are following it up with the people. So I, I'm sure that as against 4,500, we would be crossing 5,000 kilometers this year. Okay. Uh, Mr. Malik, uh, good morning. Uh, so. If it, with land acquisition in particular, uh, what's the, the key roadblock? Uh, is it more the state government's attitude? Uh, is it uh, more to do with the, you know, for w what's happening with the, with the resident front? I mean, if you could give us some more details. See, let me tell you what happens is that first of all, a project is announced. The moment a project is announced, thereafter we start the pre-feasibility study for the DPR part of it, where the land boundaries are fixed on both sides. The process of land acquisition has its own time, which goes through 3AA, 3A, 3B, 3D, 3G, which have certain timelines. And then it is not entirely in the hands of NHAI. We entirely depend on the state authorities, that is, competent authorities appointed under the Land Acquisition Act which announced the awards and then disbursed the compensation to the landowners. The landowners certainly become sensitive and rightly so, I don't blame them, that unless they have received the award money, the compensation amount, they are reluctant to pass the possession on. So this process is now being further streamlined so as to ensure that we take up these activities in a parallel mode and we economize on time to the extent possible. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about what the pace of execution will be per day? Because uh, from April to November, uh, that has gone up to about 5.82 kilometers per day. I don't know what the current um, pace is, but uh, can you tell us what it could be from here on, what the expectation is? 
See, we look at it that we should be able to achieve about seven to eight kilometers per day. Okay. Okay. As the works get awarded, as the works, as the clearances are in position. Okay. Uh, a little bit of. And let, let's let's Sorry. also appreciate. Let's let's also appreciate one thing, mm. that it, when it comes to the national highways, it's different from when you talk of a single road mm. per kilometer. You know, it's either four lane project or a six lane project. When you talk of a single lane, it's about three and a half meters. A dual lane on one side would be about seven meters plus, and when it's a four lane, it comes to about 14 meters of black topping. And when it is six laning, it goes further up. So it, the time certainly you know, is more when it comes to the national highways. Therefore, when you talk of per kilometer target, per day kilometer target, mm. it's pretty, you, you have to be realistic as compared to what you would be doing a rural road or what you would be doing a normal road in the state. No, no point taken, sir. It is just that uh, I would assume all this ought have gone in when the targets were set as well. Uh, but if you can give us some well, updates. Yeah. The, the, targets, the, the, the targets also include the targets which the ministry mm -hmm. follows for the national highways where the works are executed okay. through the state PWDs. Okay. Those are not entirely NHAI targets. The NHAI targets were set at about 6,000 kilometers against which, yes, there is some slowdown. We will be able to cross about 5,000 kilometers in terms of awarding the works. Okay. So just a, a last couple of quick questions. Uh, should we look for, forward to any NHAI bonds, those tax-free bonds which were so much uh, the, uh, uh, awaited by uh, investors? And secondly, what will your target be for next year? What should we expect from the budget in terms of SOPs? Uh, for the road sector? See, there is no constraint as far as the budget part is concerned or tying up resources or funds are concerned. I have no issue. And raising of bonds or masala bonds or sourcing funds from other sources is always directly related to my fund outflow requirement. There is no point that we should have the funds parked which are not required to be deployed in the project. Mm -hmm. So the, there has to be a perfect matching to the extent possible between inflow as well as outflow. No, no, sir, I meant no for, point sir, I meant for point. personal, uh, uh, for investors, uh, retail investors in India, your NHAI tax-free bonds were a great uh, product. Not coming this year? Well, tax-free bonds, uh, the finance ministry has taken a different view. I won't be able to comment on that. Okay, Mr. Uh, uh, thank you Malik. so much for joining us, Mr. Malik, and giving us, you know, all the targets that we were looking out for. Uh, we'll keep an eye out on them through the course of the year. Thanks so much. Well, that's the word coming in from NHAI. We'll take a short break on that note, but when we come back, fresh technical ideas coming up.